Hello, happy end of April, everyone. Uh, I can't believe it's almost May, and I saw May approaching, and I knew I had to get a video on here for this month. So I looked at my past videos, and I keep track of all the topics of every time people have asked questions and the, um, the, the comments and the questions we've touched on, and believe it or not, these go all the way back to January of 2017. So over five years of videos, uh, lots of great questions. Some maybe have been asked and repeated, but a lot have been new and new topics and I thoroughly enjoy doing them. So um, sometimes I get new questions for the videos. Sometimes I save questions I get through the month or through DMs or through client questions. So. Um, if you ever get anything, you just, you know, there's lots of ways to get answers out there or get opinions. And you probably have other people that you follow or pay attention to. Um, but, you know, if you ever want to see what I have to say about it, uh, just shoot me a message, shoot me an email or a, a DM on Facebook or Instagram. And I'm happy to answer or, or give you direction for that answer. And like I've always said, if I don't have the answer for you, I will be the first to tell you. I'm not going to pretend to know everything. Um, I don't believe anyone is an expert in everything. Uh, we all have areas of expertise and a deeper interest in knowledge and in, in different corners and pockets, but no one has the answer to everything. So I'm not going to pretend. Um, and then, you know, there are people out there who are working outside of their scope of practice, and I'm pretty adamant about not doing that, too. So if it's something medical or something um, mental health or um, something that falls in more of a specialty, something else, I will direct you to those professionals who can help you. And um, I think you could understand and respect that. So um, <clears throat> we have quite a few questions today. I have some announcements. I wanted to show you what I'm drinking and something I'm reading. I think I've gone through these before, um, but I, um, I'm drinking dandelion root tea. So at night, I'll fill up my water. Um, this is just a fraction of it. And I will uh, put some apple cider vinegar in the bottom. I will put um, lemons and then I'll put dandelion root tea um, bag. And then in the morning, when I pour my water on top, it's a nice way to start the day. So I get in about 30 ounces to start the day and then I try to get through a good amount through the day and my coffee too. So I like this traditional medicinals um, dandelion root. Dandelion root is going to really help several of your detox organs. So it's going to be great for the kidneys and the liver. And um, it, it just helps to get a little bit of extra water off my body. So it's nothing magic, but it's a nice little supplement, so to speak. Uh, it tastes kind of, mm, I don't know the word, earthy. Uh, you you want to put some stevia in there. Um, I drink mine at room temperature. You can make it hot or iced, whatever works for you. Um, so it's not a sweet tea, but that's, that's what I use. Um, I've highlighted this before. I'm slow. <laughs> this says, eat smarter. I'm trying to get this guy finished in orange by Sean Stevenson. He wrote, sleep smarter. I know I've talked about this before, and yes, I'm still reading the book. I'm very, very slow because I don't really make a lot of space to sit and read. I'm really hopeful that someday uh, I can actually sit and read, but until then, I can listen and multitask YouTube, uh, podcasts, while I'm doing other things. So, um, I need to get books on audio because that would really be helpful to me. And then I'm getting ready to do um, Why We Get Sick by Ben Bickman. So I know I've highlighted that before, but it's worth saying again. And I see this. And you know what? I'm leaving them out in front and center so I can see them and be mindful to stop and slow down and take it on a, ro a road trip. Um, you know, hit this before bed, um, I need to be better at that for sure. So that are, that are some of my goals. Okay, so I'm going to use my computer as my notes because none of this is going to stick in my memory. And um, this is my little cheat sheet. So what you see on the topic on the screen is also going to be um, what I'm reading through here. 
So, um, a couple little announcements with regards to clinics that I'm having coming up with regards to competing. So I know this doesn't apply to everyone, but maybe you have interest in that um, and maybe you want to learn more. So May 14th is a local show. It's our first show in Indiana for NPC Indiana. Um, I'm not in the show. I do have a posing client in the show and I have a f good friend in the show. Um, so I am taking a group of interested ladies to sit with them at the show. Everyone's buying their own ticket, it's $40. We're meeting at 8.30 down at the convention center in Indy on Saturday, May 14th, and then we'll go in and grab seats together in general admission. And this is for past, current, and aspiring, or just interested, aspiring competitors, but someone, anyone who's interested. And if you um, want to join us, just send me a message. It's a great way just to go and see what it's all about. Maybe it's on your radar and your bucket list and it's the best thing you can do is go and watch a show and just take it all in and learn and ask questions. So that's Saturday the 14th. <clears throat> and then on Friday, May 13th, I have some ladies coming from um, Virginia. Uh, Victoria's flying in from Virginia. Um, let's see. Bridget and her sister are going to drive from Pennsylvania and Stacy is driving down from Michigan, um, and then some local competitors and posing clients are going to join us um, on Friday, May 13th. I thought we would have a little social time, some group get together and make the most of it. So I invite you to my home um, in my garage gym, and we'll, at 10 a.m. we will do a group training, and then at 11 we'll do a group posing, and then at noon, we will go out locally and grab lunch together. So there's no cost. Um, everyone's going to buy their own lunch. Um, and hopefully it's a nice sunny day. We can sit out on a patio and just enjoy each other's company and meet new friends and just enjoy a day in um, the warm May air. So if you're looking to get connected with other ladies in fitness in the area at just a, a very informal uh, but a movement-based activity that's what I have planned I have the gym and I have the interest and I have the people that are interested so I decided I would be the catalyst to put all that together and so I just put it out there and we have people coming and I'm super excited um, so I'm also going to be running posing clinics so I promise that we're almost finished with the competitor talk here um, posing clinics will run once a month May through November um, on my social media and my story and eventually on my wall um, and on my bikini competitor group, um, I will have a list of all my posing clinic dates. So if you're a current coaching client, that's included in your service. Um, if you are a current posing coaching or past uh, coaching or posing coaching client, that is $25 per visit. We do hour long sessions. I imagine I would cap it at like six, seven people and maybe even that have that many it might even be two of you here might might even be a private session so it's going to be worth it um so i'm just opening up space for an hour a month to do posing coaching and come and learn and network and connect so message me and i can send you those graphics and get you more information um and then it's in regards to my coaching and my training um i <clears throat> have space for coaching um i have a few more spaces on the 15th let's see we're pretty close to the 30th so that one's shut off um a few more spaces may 15th and then i go to the 15th of every month so june july august 15th that i'll be doing intakes just to slow it down a little bit over the summer since my children are home and we do more traveling um i want to only do this if i can do it well and i can do it uh to best offer a balanced, calm service and not be stressed. I don't do this because I want huge volumes and a big team. I do this out of a big team. I do this out of passion to educate and help other people. And um, I'm not really hardwired to be one of those coaches that has hundreds of clients and they're sitting on their computer till two in the morning. I cannot do it. I will not do it. And uh, it's just too much. So once I start sacrificing my health and wellness, then I know it's time to slow it down or cut it off. And 
So those are my boundaries, and um, I keep the balance in it, keep it pretty small so that I can be a good um, trainee myself, but a good trainer, a good coach, a good mom, a good wife, um, and um, a good friend and daughter. I, I don't want to be so committed and, and uh, you know, be, be excited about a growing bank account, but be an empty person. So that is just not worth it to me. Um, so, and then personal training, I do that Monday through Thursday. Um, I won't be offering Saturdays because of travel in the posing clinic, but Monday through Thursdays, um, my early morning spots are full, and then probably in the summer, my my eight, nines, and tens will start to fill up. So, um, you know, hit reach out to me. We can get personal training, and I would love that, and we can put some nutritional consulting in your hour as well, however you want to package that hour. All training, training is some nutrition, all nutrition, whatever that 60 minutes, it's yours. Um, and so I have ongoing for that and posing coaching. So that is that. And okay, and another thing, one last thing. Um, make sure that you do follow me on Mindy Irish, Fit, Fit Gal Mindy on Instagram and Mindy Irish on Facebook. That's where I do most of my teaching and a lot of my um, daily posting and stories and motivation. Um, I will put it in my groups and I will put it on my Facebook business page, but it's just a small fraction. It's a little drip. I just put the majority of it in those two platforms, and that's where I am most of the time. So um, that's where I put a lot of my training and my mobility and all of my training um, albums and food albums, and I just think it's the best place to kind of learn and absorb if that's what you're looking to get out of this. Okay, so first question comes from... Stacy, and I believe the reason I share these questions is because I believe that you, they're, they're common and you will come upon them, if not now, at some point. And I share them because I encourage girls to ask these questions, but I encourage them to um, not be afraid because it, I, I really promise that if you have a question, um, 10 other ladies probably have the same question. So I encourage you to ask even what you think is a simple question. She asks, is it normal to not be very sore after having a really good workout? I used to, um, I didn't eat much food before training with you. Um, I tore my body up when I did a lot of cardio and I was always, always sore and I didn't feel like I got a good workout unless I was sore. Does that sound familiar? Now, so this is since having started working with me, I seem to be recovering really well and I'm hardly ever sore. I may be a little bit, so I'm wondering if I'm not getting a good enough workout. So don't let the constant pursuit for soreness be your determination of a good workout or not. Um, the presence of soreness does not indicate the workout was effective and the lack of soreness does not indicate that the workout was ineffective, okay? So we have been trained to think that we must beat our bodies up, run ourselves into the ground, get the highest calorie count we can, get the highest heart rate for as long as we can so that we go crawling out of a gym. And that's how we, if we beat ourselves up, uh, then we're probably going to get in shape. I can tell you it's actually the opposite. You want to challenge yourself. You want to get under heavy load. You want to go through full range of motion. You want to have good intensity in your cardio, but not so much that you can't recover, you can't sleep, that your hunger cues are through the roof, that your energy is shot. Uh, your hunger, energy, and cravings need to be in balance. So Stacy's asking, and she's saying, I feel great, I'm training well, and my strength is good, and I'm recovering, I'm not super sore, so is that a problem? No. I tend to, now as a trainee, 10 years in, I tend to get sore um, when um, I'm hitting a new angle, I'm doing a new exercise, or I'm pulling a much heavier, much, much heavier load. So um, I don't really chase the soreness, I chase more of the range of motion and the mind to muscle connection. And that is, um, you know, I'm, I'm always logging my workouts, I'm always making sure I'm trying to go up in load, but not so much that I'm recruiting the wrong muscles. So I keep all of that in check and I look at my aura ring to make sure I'm recovering and sleeping well. And that 
is how I read my biofeedback. So you don't have to be sore to be doing it effectively, but I love that question. Um, if you're working out and you're pulling 20, 25 reps and you're just talking and not challenged, that's cardio, okay? So, you know, in some of these group X classes when they're doing lightweight faster and they're doing tons of it, that um, is not <clears throat> giving your body that uh, resistance training that we want. We want to go to under heavier progressive overload, but not so much that you are disabling yourself for days, okay? You know that kind of workout you get where you can't sit down, you can't walk up the stairs. It is not meant to be like that all the time, but we're kind of think that it should, and I want to reset that mindset. Okay, um, another question is if I get sick and I can't eat or train, so I know a lot of people are battling illnesses right now, if I get sick and I cannot eat or train, will I lose muscle? So, love this question. Um, I actually got it just today. And um, the answer in short is no. Um, in a few days, in a few weeks and months, yes. It is use it or lose it. But if you're just temporarily down, if you're resting, or if you're taking intentional deloads and recovery, there's benefit to that. You can, you know how you go on vacation, you rest, you get off the pattern, you come back stronger. You're not going to lose muscle. Um, there's some benefits to fasting too. But long term, if we go without eating and we go without training, we're talking weeks, there is a problem and you will start to use, lose that muscle mass. You know how when you get an injury, let's say a left arm is in a cast and the right arm is not, or the same with the leg, one atrophies. That's what will happen. But it doesn't take long for it to catch back up once you get that muscle memory and more of that action. So um, don't worry if it's short term, a couple of days. But, you know, if you've been out of the gym for three, four weeks, months, you should be concerned and we want to get you back in the gym because the farther you get from it, the harder it will be to come back. So when we know it's short term like that, we can just know that it's the priority to let your body heal and get well or repair an injury and then get back at it. Okay, great question. Thank you. With regards to training and cardio, what's the best layout? So I get this question a lot. Um, people will... Um, want to do it all together, which if that's what you have to do and that's what you do, then, then so be it. My dogs are going to bark at that dog's going away. Arnold, stop. They take their job very seriously. All right. Come on. You did your job. You did it. Good job. You did it. I'm safe. <laughs> okay. So, with regards to training and cardio, what is the best layout? Um, ideally, you want to keep them separate. If you can do your cardio, uh, say, first thing in the morning, have some repair, get in a good meal, and then train. I personally... Uh, I don't like to break my fast until 8 a.m., so I do my cardio at like 4.30, um, and then I do my sauna, and then I train. Um, but there's a break in there. You know, I have some recovery. And uh, I am training fasted, but it's because my priority right now is to train, um, is to only eat in a certain window. Um, most people, uh, maybe they're putting the training and cardio together, which is fine, but um, if you can separate it, that's going to be most ideal because it's two different signals. And if you're training to grow your muscle, so you're not in a calorie deficit, maybe you're right at maintenance, then, um, you know, ideally you could, it's fine to train fasted, but you're going to ha typically have more strength when you have at least one meal in you, but not right before you train. Because if you throw a bunch of protein in, it's going to be hard to digest it and have your strength. Um, so some people might like to do their cardio in the morning and then they might train midday or mid afternoon or early evening. Um, so ideally if you can separate it, that's great, but let's just say that it's most optimal if you have an hour and a half, you know, use that hour for training and use 30 minutes for cardio. Whether you put the cardio first or the training first is 
really a preference. If I have to put them back to back and in times I have, I will do my training first because it's more of a priority to keep that lean muscle mass or work to build it up. And then I will do the cardio second. Um, so I'm not giving priority energy to the cardio. <clears throat> but again, if you can separate them, that's in your best interest, okay? But like I said, don't not do it because you can't, well, Mindy said, or so-and-so said, I've got to have two separate sessions, and I can't get two sessions, so I'm just not going to do it at all. That is not my point. Um, if you have the luxury of having equipment at your home or having the ability to, you know, go to the gym one time and do something at home, then, you know, try to keep it separate. There's a lot of philosophy on that and a lot of strategy. I honestly say do what works for you and your agenda because ultimately that's what you will do. If it's too stressful and you're just following someone else's uh, program and someone else's layout and you can't actively do it, then the chances of you doing it ongoing are really low. And so we wanna set you up to do something that you're going to maintain and be able to continue to do. Um, can I lose fat, gain muscle, and train for a running event at the same time? So in short, the answer, my opinion, is no. A lot of people want to use running for fat loss uh, I believe in intervals and I believe in sprinting um, as components to fat loss goals with regards to a calorie deficit if that's your goal. I don't agree with the long distance running or using like a 5k or a half marathon or marathon training for fat loss because it puts too much alternative Hormonal stress. I'm not talking female hormones. I'm talking cortisol. I am talking later uh, insulin surges with regards to hunger cravings and sugar cravings because cortisol got so high, and the ten, the ten the trend to overeat gets higher when you are exerting so much long duration cardio. Um, so, if you're trying to weight train and change body composition and lose body fat and gain muscle and train for performance. That's a lot of goals at the same time. I would say pick something. If you're training for performance, you're training to run and hit a certain time or that's a bucket list, focus on that. Focus on eating well. Don't worry about you know, the scale shooting up or down. Focus on eating at maintenance or a tick above or enough to fuel that workout um, and that's your priority. Then, when you want to go into um, adding lean mass, use walking. Use a little bit of incline walking, outdoor walking, because it doesn't raise stress levels in the body uh, like running was. Well, um, additionally, the calories you think that you're burning when you're running are always a fraction of that. And the more you run for the longer periods of time over time. If you start at running five miles a day and you do that for a week, you're going to expend a good amount of energy up front, but your body is there to preserve you. So it says, I'm going to become more efficient. So the next week you go out and run five miles a day for a week, it will get better at preserving you and expending less energy. So what used to be a tuner calorie burn is now a 150 calorie burn for the same amount of time. I'm just using random numbers. But your body gets more efficient and you expend less because it's going to salvage you. You're created not to just wither away to nothing. And that's something we have to remember. We have a protective mechanism in our bodies that keeps us from just getting smaller, 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 smaller. You get to a point where it says, ultimately I'm trying to um, preserve you so that you can create new humans. That's the job of our bodies. And it's going to preserve you and, and keep that body as a priority. So you can't just whittle away to nothing. And um, that's that protective mechanism. Uh, if you're looking to grow lean mass, try to avoid all the long duration cardio. You wanted to make weight training as your focus. 
and you want to be eating right at your maintenance or tick above. More fat, overeating does not equal more muscle. Don't buy into that message. It is false. Um, if that's the case, you just are wanting to eat more and just say that. Um, we just need to be at maintenance or a tick above to fuel those um, muscle bellies and those workouts. Then we're ready to go into a cut. You keep training as intensely as you can and pull the calories down to create that deficit to cause the body to go into stored fat for fuel to lean out. And then that leaner skin enables you to keep the muscle that you've built or try to because you will use some of it that leaner skin will reveal more of that muscle you built. That's how you look more muscle or more toned. I don't like to say toned, but that's what people, when they say, I want to tone up, that's what they're really meaning, okay? So um, the answer is no. It's typically not done all at once. Someone who's brand new can lose fat and gain muscle in a body recomposition, typically, because they get these newbie response, but someone like myself, who's years down the road, um, my body has figured that out and I have to have phases of that. Um, right now I'm personally in more of a maintenance phase. I wanna stay where I am body composition wise, if not take a little body fat off, but I am trying to make little tweaks in my, in my muscles. Um, I'm really content with the amount of muscle I have. Um, everyone could always put on a little more. That's not what I'm saying, but I'm not in this brain mindset of I've got to. I'm I'm so far down the road with my age, you know me putting on ten pounds of lean mass is not going to happen. Uh, as a as a natural athlete, I'm I'm more or less just keeping body fat in check and um, staying leaner and st keeping health my priority and super content with how my body is handling all of that. So that's a blessing. Um, and then if you are doing a running event and you're running for performance, again, make that your priority. Get in, get out, hit that goal, and then get back to the weight training. Um, but I would weight train maybe three times a week while you're doing all that running. But if you're doing 10, 15 miles a day and trying to run, you're going to be pretty exhausted. Your family wants to see you. So you got to pick and choose where you're going to use your time. Um, once, is this our last question? Oh, two more. Once I lose to my goal weight, how do I maintain it? So Corey had asked this one a while back, and um, she is uh, cutting down on her calories, and she's close to where she wants to be, so she wants to know, what do I do now? So you want to um, always be in check with where you are at your calories, your carbs, fats, and proteins. Um, your carbs, fats, and proteins are kind of the how you divvy up the calories. So the calorie is like saying you're in third grade and the carbs, fats, and proteins are like saying you're in Mrs. Smith's class in third grade, you're in Mr. Brown's class, or you're in Mr. Baker's class, okay? It's, it's the third grade classes, classrooms that make up the third grade. Does that make sense? So that's the components of calories. Um, but you have to have an awareness. You can't just not be tracking that and be accountable to that. Um, you have to know where you are with regards to what you're expending and where you're losing and you create that deficit in the middle to create that cut and get that fat loss and that stored fat for fuel. But again, if you're too cortisol spiked, if you're doing too much cardio, you're probably not going to lose body fat because the cortisol is causing you to hold water, raise belly fat and raise hunger and skew off some hormones, mess with um, testosterone potentially, uh, all kinds of mixed messaging. So you've got to be very careful. It's really in calories and moving more through the day and not just getting on a treadmill or a bike. Um, it is it is about you know parking your car farther out and it is about keeping active and so you, you measure things and you know your step count, you know what you weigh, you know your waist, you know your calories and your macros. You hit your goal weight and then you might want to come up about 100 calories, 150 calories uh, for this that next week, and you shouldn't be losing anymore, okay? Uh, you might tighten up a little bit more from there because you're refeeding, so to speak. Uh, so measure that, do that application for a week, and then a week later, you might add like 50, 100 calories. 
So then we're like 250 calories up from where we were. You should be at a maintenance. You don't get to march your metabolism all the way down here. And let's just say that you started out eating 2,500 calories and you are a 200 pound person, okay? I'm just throwing numbers out. Uh, to go into fat loss, you, um, what did I say? 250 calories, 25, let's see, 2,500 calories for a 200 pound person. So you might take your calories down to 2,000 calories and you create a 500 calorie deficit and you start moving more. So maybe you're at a 507 calorie, 500 or 700 calorie deficit. That 700 calorie deficit is going to start to march you down off of 200 pounds, okay? Just some random numbers. Um, let's say that you eventually get yourself down to 160, 150, and you're now eating 15, 1600, okay? You can't go back to eating 2,500. Your metabolism was used to be metabolizing 2,500. Now it's used to metabolizing 1,000 calories less. Your old maintenance no longer applies because that was you and your 200 calorie body, 200 pound body. You are now in your 160 pound body. Okay, so you have to keep that in mind. You are fueling a smaller body. You don't need all that food. You, this is a mistake people make. They diet down, they get to their goal weight, and then they think, I can go back to doing exactly what I did before. You cannot. You will regain it. You will look just like you did before, if not more, because the body fat will overshoot. So what does that mean? You, at 150 pounds, probably need, again, I'm just throwing out random numbers. Don't take this for set in stone, about now 17, 1800. I'm just throwing it out there with some movement still. You don't get to go back to 2500 if you want to maintain that 200, that 150, okay? Um, so you've got to be very careful. You've got to be very intentional and very strategic. I'm not saying you have to count every calorie at that point, track everything and weigh it, but what I am saying is that you have to constantly stay intentional and mindful. You cannot just go into autopilot and say, I'm here and I'm gonna go do back what I was because old ways produce old product. Keep that in mind, all right? New ways produce the new product. You gotta keep doing the new ways. But if it's so strict and rigid and you can't maintain it, you're miserable, you can't leave the home and socialize, that is not a good plan for you. You need to find a good a new plan. So you gotta find your balance, okay? Find the activity you love to do, keep doing that. I love to walk, uh, I love to weight train, I like to do sauna, I like to do some yoga, mobility. I am not a runner, I am not a spinner. I am not a, a box jumper, I am not a group X person. Those are hard on my body. I like doing my own thing, so you know, it works, I show up, I do that. Again, find the plan that works for you that you will work because that's the one that will stay with you forever, okay? Make it your own, I can't say that enough. If you're constantly living someone else's plan and it's failing, it's because it's not the plan for you and you need to let their plan and their goals and their vision go and find your plan and execute it and make it work for your lifestyle and your interests. And then I promise you, you won't need motivation to do it. You will just do it because you love it and it feels good and it fits your lifestyle naturally. Okay, <clears throat> last question. What is the benefit of eating carbs? So I got this question through a DM a while back. Um, first of all, my first response was fiber. You know, we need the fiber for uh, gut health. Um, you're also going to bring in um, um, lots of phytonutrients and micronutrients, um, vitamins and minerals, and that's the benefit. And, you know, all the colors that you see, the polyphenols that you see in the fruits and vegetables, those go into your cells and they are great for antioxidants and combating those free, rad free radicals floating throughout the body. So that's what you need that for. 
carbs are your friend, but I'm not talking refined, processed, white flour, sugar carbs. I am talking um, whole foods, uh, maybe oats, rice, sweet potato. Maybe you do Ezekiel breads, um, you, fruits and vegetables. Uh, the, some people use beans. That's what I'm talking about. Um, don't think that tons of white flour, you might be able to throw a little bit in here and there, but predominantly without the fiber, without the micronutrients, it's just going to become a paste in your body and it is not going to be to your benefit. So that is ultimately what we need. Um, so don't shame carbs, just find the right carbs that you can eat. I personally, just to give you a little insight, I do a lower fat diet. I do uh, lots of plants, fruits and vegetables. I do oats, I do nuts, I do proteins. Um, and my fats come from a little bit of red meat, eggs, um, butter, nuts, avocado. Um, and I feel better on lower fat, but that's what works for me. Some people feel better on higher fat. Um, but I do better on about almost like 150 to 200 carbs a day. But again, it's not... It's not junk. It's not white sugar. Occasionally, I'll use some honey. I will use some, um, I've used hard candy after a workout. Um, I have used um, brown sugar. Um, so there's a time and a place for it. Um, but I'm not using, you know, alcohol and I'm not using uh, donuts and muffins and cookies and that, like with which spikes the blood sugar really hard and the wheat, all those things. So I'm kind of going off on a different topic, but there, there is benefit of carbs. But I will say this last thing, if you are choosing some carbohydrates that cause you to not be able to stop eating them, so if it's almost like creating a, a food addiction or a craving for more, um, you can't just have one. I would say that that's probably not a fit for you and you want to find something that you can fuel on that fuels you to perform and function well but cut it off. There shouldn't be something that has a stronghold on you so you're going to have to work to get off of that um, and I don't want you to demonize anything like that. Just cut it out and walk away from it. Identify it, cut it out, walk away from it and find something else that you can put in that satisfies you and gives you that strength that energy through your workouts and through the day, mental clarity, and enables you to sleep at night. Once you get that, you're going to be in a golden place with your workouts, your nutrition, um, and your body composition goals. So, okay, that's what I have for you today. That's April. I will do the, I'll do another one in May before my kids get out of school. And then um, probably not June, July. I'll try to come back in August, maybe September. If you have any questions, let me know. And I thank you for um, being here for five years. And I know a lot of you tell me that you um, watch these videos and you can go in and on the wall, um, I think I've got them hashtagged under monthly Q&A video. And that should bring up all the ones that I've hashtagged, if, we, if not for the past few years. And um, maybe go into like the photos file in the wall and pull up that, it might bring up the videos too. But tons and tons and tons of good content on here just because you've asked it and it's here for you. So thanks for being here. I hope you have a wonderful day and um, reach out for coaching, training, and questions and to join us on May 13th and 14th and in our monthly posing clinics. And I so appreciate you and we will talk to you soon.